Over 4,000 years ago, on the banks of the Nile, Egypt's builders may have unlocked a secret we're only now beginning to understand. Evidence suggests they harnessed the raw force of water, pressure, hydraulics, and hidden channels to move millions of tons of stone. Could it be that the pyramids weren't just monuments of muscle, but proof of a lost technology so advanced it defies our history books? What the ancients knew might change everything we think we know about Egypt. At first glance, the pyramids seem like the triumph of manpower alone. Tens of thousands of workers, ramps stretching to the sky, and endless hours of toil under the blazing sun. But the numbers don't add up. Some limestone blocks weigh more than 15 tons, and the granite stones from Aswan tip the scales at over 70. How could these stones have been lifted, transported, and positioned with such precision? The answer may not lie in muscle, but in water. Here's the shocking part. Scattered throughout Egypt are clues that suggest the civilization may have harnessed hydraulics thousands of years before the technology was officially invented. Take the underground chambers of the Great Pyramid. Recent scans using cosmic ray muons revealed not just hidden voids, but curious architectural features that may have once acted as water channels. Could it be that the pyramid's core was designed not only for symbolic meaning, but also as part of a hydraulic machine? Some researchers argue that rising and falling water could have created pressure to help lift blocks or to power internal mechanisms we still don't understand. Transition now to the Nile itself. Every year, its flood waters surged across the land, replenishing fields and dictating the rhythms of Egyptian life. But what if those floods also provided the perfect conditions for large-scale engineering? Archaeologists have recently uncovered remains of ancient canals and harbours near the pyramids, suggesting that stones may have been floated directly to construction sites. But what if the water's roll didn't stop there? Imagine hydraulic locks and channels designed to raise blocks closer to the pyramid's base, reducing the need for impossible ramps. Could this be the missing link in pyramid construction? The evidence deepens when we explore the Temple of Seti Verst at Abydos. Within its foundations, researchers have identified mysterious channels that appear to have been designed for the controlled movement of water. Some even believe these channels formed part of an ancient hydraulic system capable of powering tools or lifting mechanisms. The precision of the temple's carvings, so clean they almost look machined, adds weight to the idea that water pressure could have been harnessed for more than just irrigation. But the most tantalizing hint lies beneath the sands of Giza. In 2023, ground-penetrating radar revealed traces of a buried waterway that once ran closer to the pyramids than previously believed. This discovery aligns perfectly with ancient records describing how the Egyptians floated colossal stones as if on rafts. Could this channel have fed into an intricate system of basins and reservoirs, effectively turning the pyramid site into a giant hydraulic workshop? Skeptics argue that such theories overstate the evidence. They point to ramps, both straight and zigzagging, as the most plausible explanation. Yet even here, water seeps into the story. Experiments have shown that when sand is dampened to just the right degree, it cuts friction nearly in half, making it dramatically easier to drag massive blocks. Was this a deliberate technique? In other words, the Egyptians may have used water not only to transport, but to manipulate the very physics of friction. A simple, elegant solution hidden in plain sight. And then there are the mysterious watermarks found inside the Osirion at Abydos, an underground temple cut deep into bedrock. Its massive stone pillars show evidence of long exposure to rising and falling water. But this site is miles from the Nile. Could it have been deliberately flooded, forming part of a hydraulic ritual, or perhaps an experiment in controlling subterranean water pressure? Some researchers even speculate the Osirion may have been designed as a symbolic model of the underworld, but with practical engineering woven into its very stones. 
What makes this story even more fascinating is how it connects Egypt to other ancient civilizations. The Minoans, the Romans, and even the Persians used hydraulic technology to build aqueducts, baths, and irrigation systems. But Egypt predates them all. Could the Egyptians have pioneered hydraulic engineering long before it became common knowledge? If so, why does their use of it vanish from history, leaving only whispers in stone and sand? The idea becomes even harder to dismiss when we consider the extraordinary precision of Egyptian monuments. The Great Pyramid is aligned almost perfectly to true north, a feat requiring mathematical genius. But aligning blocks weighing dozens of tons with millimeter accuracy, that requires more than genius. It suggests technology. Whether that was mechanical ramps, counterweights, or water-driven hydraulics, the evidence continues to grow that the Egyptians knew more about engineering than we've given them credit for. As we step back and view the grand sweep of Egypt's achievements, the role of water feels impossible to ignore. The Nile wasn't just their lifeline. It may have been their power source, their transport network, even their secret tool of construction. Imagine the pyramids not as static tombs, but as humming, fluid-powered machines, where water pressure rose and fell like the pulse of the Earth itself. The truth is, we may never know exactly how the Egyptians built their colossal monuments, but with each discovery, whether it's a buried canal, a hidden chamber, or a water-scarred temple, the story of hydraulic technology in ancient Egypt grows more compelling. Far from being a civilization frozen in time, they emerge as pioneers, harnessing natural forces in ways that leave us astonished today. So the next time you gaze at the pyramids, remember this. Those stones may not have been lifted by mere muscle. They may have risen with the silent, unstoppable force of water, technology both ancient and yet still barely understood. We've seen how the Egyptians may have mastered forms of hydraulic technology that still puzzle modern engineers. But what happens when archaeologists uncover evidence of systems so advanced they seem impossible for their time? In our next investigation, we'll explore hydraulic technology in Egypt that by all logic shouldn't even exist. Deep within the desert sands of Abydos, Egypt, Approximately 350 miles south of the Giza Plateau lies a structure that continues to confound archaeologists and historians. The Osirian, officially attributed to Pharaoh Seti, the first of the 19th dynasty, circa 1290 to 1279 BCE. This enigmatic monument presents a series of architectural, logistical, and hydrological anomalies that strongly suggest a far older and potentially pre-dynastic origin. The Osirian's mysteries challenge the conventional timeline of ancient Egyptian civilization and raise profound questions about the capabilities of cultures that may have predated the pharaohs. The Assyrian's design is a radical departure from the established norms of Egyptian temple architecture. Throughout the Old, Middle and New Kingdoms, Egyptian temples such as Karnak at Thebes, dedicated to Amun-Re and expanded over centuries, primarily from the Middle Kingdom onward, and the Luxor Temple, largely constructed during the New Kingdom by Amenhotep III and Ramesses II, adhered to a predominantly linear and rectangular layout. These temples typically featured pylons, hyperstyle halls, sanctuaries and courtyards, all arranged along a central axis. The Osirion, in contrast, possesses a unique L-shaped configuration, a feature not found in any other known Egyptian temple of the dynastic period. This fundamental difference in design raises critical questions about its intended purpose and the cultural context in which it was built. Was it designed for a different set of rituals? perhaps connected to a belief system distinct from the well-documented Egyptian pantheon? Furthermore, the Assyrian's construction employs colossal rose granite blocks, some weighing an estimated 100 tons. These stones were quarried in Aswan, located over 200 miles south of Abydos. While the ancient Egyptians were undeniably skilled engineers, evidenced by the construction of the pyramids, primarily during the Old Kingdom, Fourth Dynasty, the transportation and precise placement of such massive blocks, especially granite, 
in a location relatively far from the Nile River, presents a formidable logistical challenge. The Nile served as the primary highway of ancient Egypt, facilitating the transport of heavy materials. The Old Kingdom Egyptians, who built the Giza pyramids, primarily used limestone, which is softer and easier to quarry and work than granite. While they did use granite for specific elements, like portcullises and some sarcophagi, the scale of its use in the Assyrian is unprecedented for such an early period, according to mainstream dating. Granite, being an exceptionally hard igneous rock, requires specialized tools and techniques to shape and manipulate. While the Egyptians of the dynastic periods possessed copper tools, and later bronze, an alloy of copper and tin, becoming more common during the Middle Kingdom, the working of such large granite blocks with these tools, achieving such precision, remains a subject of intense debate. Some researchers suggest that the level of craftsmanship displayed in the Assyrian points to a technology beyond what is currently attributed to the early dynastic or even Old Kingdom Egyptians.